Imagine that you wanted to automate an excavator. That should be easy, mechanically at least, because an excavator is already basically a robot. All of its movements are actuated by hydraulics, and those hydraulics are controlled by electronically piloted valves, so automating that is really easy. But then it gets a bit more complicated. For a start, you need to know the position of the bucket, and that in turn means that you need to know the position of the boom and the dipper arm, so that means you need some sensors. There's a few ways that you can do this. You could take the approach that a lot of robot arms take, where you directly measure the position of each of the joints. Alternatively, you could do what Leica Geosystems have done and use inertial measurement units, IMUs. An IMU is the thing that you've got in your mobile phone that tells it which way around you're holding it. In the Leica system, they mount an IMU to the boom and one to the dipper arm and one to the base of the machine. These sensors tell the system where each arm is in space. Before you start work, you have to calibrate the system by telling it what shape the excavator is and how long each of its arms are. You can do this using a tape measure, but it's much quicker to use a surveying system like a total station. On this Leica demonstrator machine, they have a steel wrist rotating coupling between the dipper arm and the bucket. This allows the bucket to rotate a full 360 degrees. The steel wrist rotator has sensors built into it to tell it the position of the bucket, and this data is fed back directly into the Leica system. Next, the excavator needs to know where it is. The easiest way to do that is to use GNSS, and on this machine there are two GNSS receivers so that the system can orientate itself as well as fixing its position in space. So now you have an excavator that can control itself, with a feedback system to tell it where its arms are, and most importantly, where its bucket is. But it would be really useful to know how much force the bucket was exerting, and how much weight there is in the bucket. This is useful for a couple of reasons. First, it's handy to know how much material you're moving, but more importantly, you need to know when the bucket encounters something that it can't move. Once you've got your automated excavator, you're going to need to tell it where to dig and what to dig. That means you're going to need some sort of interface between the CAD model that the designers have created and the machine. That part is relatively straightforward because CAD files need to be interchangeable between different software types, and that means that standards have already been created to allow them to be easily transferred. But describing where to dig a hole and how deep to dig it is only part of the problem. We also need to decide things like where the spoil that comes out of the hole is going to go. Are we going to leave it in a heap next to the hole, or are we going to put it into a dumper and have it taken away? If we're going to leave it in a heap, then the excavator needs to know which side of the hole to leave it. If we're going to load it into a dumper, then the excavator needs to know where the dumper is going to come so that it can reach it, and it needs to know how much the dumper can carry, it needs to know when the dumper is full so that it pauses and waits for the dumper to come back. If the dumper is driven by a human, then our automated excavator needs to be ready for that human to be unreliable and to do unpredictable things, like parking in the wrong place. If the dumper is also automated, then the system needs to know where both the dumper and the excavator are so that it can coordinate the two machines working together. That could be done by having the two machines communicate with each other directly, or they could both be controlled by a central computer that runs the site. If that central computer also has the site plans on it, and an awareness of where each machine on the site was, then we could run the whole thing like a video game. We call that a digital twin. As well as knowing where to dig and how deep to dig, our automated excavator also needs to know where not to dig. We don't want our excavator to dig through gas mains, electricity cables, drains, or archeological sites. The problem we have is for an awful lot of this stuff, even things that have been installed relatively recently, we don't actually know where a lot of them are. This is a big problem, even for human-driven machines. In the UK, there are 60,000 buried cable strikes a year, resulting in 12 deaths and 600 serious injuries, not to mention the enormous cost and disruption of each of these events. It's estimated that on average, the cost of a cable strike is around £27,000. So we need our digital twin to have all of that information built into it. In an ideal world, you really need this information right at the start of the project. 
Finding it when you've already started building adds enormous expense to a project. That means you need a really good quality survey of the site to be undertaken before you start planning. And that survey needs to be correctly specified because there's a big difference between just checking the paperwork and actually going and looking with good quality survey tools for everything that might be buried under your site. So if building an automated excavator is so simple, why can't I just go and buy one now? The answer is that the range of tasks we require excavators to perform is enormously complex. So building a practical automated excavator that can undertake all of the tasks, or even a subset of the tasks that a human-driven excavator can, is an enormously complex problem. It turns out that even the most unsophisticated digger driver is significantly more capable of dealing with uncertainty, incomplete information, and rapidly changing situations than our smartest automation system. What this means is that if we want automated excavators, we have two choices. We can either make our artificial intelligence systems very much smarter than they are now, so that they can function in the same way that a human does, or we can change the way we design and run civil engineering and construction projects. Most of you will be familiar with the story of Henry Ford, who revolutionised the production of cars in the early part of the 20th century. Before Ford came along, the production of motor vehicles was a process in which skilled artisans produced one-off bespoke prototypes. Now, everybody knows that Ford introduced standardisation, Famously, you could have the Model T in any colour you like, as long as it was black. But what's less well known is that Ford introduced process control. The idea that cars need to be built as part of a carefully designed and integrated chain of tasks. For Ford, it wasn't enough to just design the car, you had to design the process of building it as well. This standardisation and process control meant that many years later, when industrial robots came along, they could build cars too, because robots love a standardised process. So, if we want to start using automated excavators, we're probably first going to have to change the way we manage construction projects. So this isn't a technical problem, it's a people problem.